Whether to go for an internal or external battery on your e-mountain bike has become a little bit of an obsession over the last 12 months. So on today's show, we're going to be looking at what the options are and what should you choose. Yeah, internal, external, cost, the weight, it's all coming up in today's show about batteries. Well, let's start off with internal or integrated batteries. Actually, is there a difference between the two? Yeah, a big difference, Steve. An internal battery is one that pushes into a solid down tube and an integrated battery is one that clips into the down tube to make it kind of like a full tube profile from the likes, you know, kind of like the Kinevo. Yeah. Um, so, the, so basically the, the new white bikes mm -hmm. have got a internal battery, battery yeah, and right. also the new Levos, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly that. So. Whereas I guess the integrated, uh, uh, likes of the new Kanzel Motera, mm -hmm. that's got integrated battery which, which drops out by way of the key. a key. Yeah. Or the Merida, the new Merida bikes, mm -hmm. which have got the Shimano integrated battery, yeah. which pops out as well. They've got a cover on the front. Mm -hmm. So a big difference with that. Big difference. And also a big difference in the range as well. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at some of the lower internal batteries or integrated batteries, like the Fazua, that's mm -hmm. 250 watt hours. Then Shimano have got a 418 watt hour integrated battery. Mm -hmm. But the most common number, I think, in terms of watt hours is the 504. 504, right? yeah, definitely. Which, which comes on Specialized, on uh, Shimano, and, of course, on the new Bosch system as well. Yamaha and and as well. the old Bosch system. Yeah, yeah. And the Yamaha, too. Mm -hmm. Then there's a big step up. Now, that's what I was talking about. There's a big, uh, big focus in recent months about bikes having more range. And, of course, that new 625-watt-hour battery by Bosch has been a big favourite on a lot of bikes in recent months, right? Yeah, we've seen that linked up even with piggyback systems as well to increase that range even further from the likes of Mondraker yeah. you know, and High Bike as well. But let's not, let's not rush into add-ons. Let's okay. not rush into bolt-ons. Right. Let's finish off with internal or internal on, batteries. Because you got six hundred twenty-five yeah. uh, uh, internal from Bosch, mm -hmm. and then you've got, of course, the Levo, which comes with a seven hundred four watt-hour battery, yeah. which is which what we thought was the limit, the, dog, which but, is the limit. Mm -hmm. But you've got the new Rockwell. Right? Yeah, the new Rockwell RX seven fifty comes in with a massive seven hundred fifty watt hours of battery power. You imagine linking that out with a spare battery, one thousand five hundred watt hours. Insane, mm -hmm. absolutely insane. Uh, now that you move on to semi-integrated batteries, so to confuse things even more, now the Fantic have got a semi-integrated battery. Uh, now that is 630 watt hours, um, and obviously it's like it's half in, half out, right? Of course, things get a little bit more complicated when you've got an internal and an external bolt-on. Mm -hmm. Now, High Bike have recently come out with their new 2020 range, which have got a 625 watt hour battery in the down tube, and you can bolt on a 500 watt hour to give you 120 watt hours, mm -hmm. 125 watt hours. That's a huge range, right? Pretty impressive. What do you think about this? Would you, would you prefer to carry your spare in a backpack or on the bike? I was actually thinking about it earlier on. I think, you know, obviously currently I tend to ride with a battery in a backpack purely because I've got like the rail system which has just come out on the high bike. But I think thinking about it, I would actually prefer that battery to be mounted on the bike because obviously the benefits of having it mounted and not having it bouncing around in your backpack. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts? Yeah, well, we recently did a feature on a summit to see in northern Italy where we used three batteries. Obviously, the uh, the Canyon bikes, mm -hmm. uh, which we use, have got external batteries. You know, they are quite dinky. You, yeah. can, you can stick two of those mm -hmm. batteries in your backpack yeah. and do a, you know, an enormous ride. Yeah, I've done a couple of big rides. I've had two of those back, uh, yeah. batteries in my backpack as well. But, you know, I think, I think external batteries have been a little bit out of favour. The mm -hmm. focus has definitely been on internal batteries over the last 12 months. Um, but uh, Lapierre have actually uh, turned the tables on this and they come out with their new uh, Overvolt GLP, which is the Gravity mm -hmm. Gravity Project. Logic. Gravity Logic Project. Mm -hmm. Now, the thinking with this is that because they've got the new Bosch motor, which is smaller and more yeah. compact, uh, they've put a 500 watt hour battery on top of that motor, mm -hmm. which means it completely changes the dynamic ride of the bike. So obviously when you've got a, a big, 700 800 watt hour battery in the down tube that means yeah. you've got to have quite a solid frame up mm -hmm. there which is going to affect the weight distribution of the bike yeah and i've ridden uh the lap here bike and when you've got that battery located centrally you can pop the front wheel left. So it's actually directly around. kind of like a seat tube or well no it's, 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 it's located uh, horizontally on top of the top okay. of the motor right. but uh in terms of the ride characteristics yeah. it's very very different yeah. to uh, to the down tube mounted ones um 
But it's not doesn't just stop there. You, when you when you're looking at a battery, you look if you look at other options as well. You're looking at weight. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that a factor? Price. If you're going to be getting a spare battery, you know, a 500 a watt. Costly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe a 500 watt hour Shimano battery comes in about 450 pounds. Yeah. But like, if you want a 700 watt hour specialized battery, they're 1100 pounds. So that's got to factor into mm -hmm. your equation, right? Yeah, of course. And then I think about visual, how a bike looks. Exactly. That's it. Do you want to see that big down tube with a big battery sat in it, or do you want to well, see a slimmer I'd, line? I don't know. Yeah. Some of them, they're, some of them are pretty slim line now, though, aren't they? Yeah, especially with the new Bosch internal battery. I think we've got that nice silhouette now of the down mm -hmm. tube meeting the battery and the motor all in one, whereas it was yeah. a bit, you know, some weird shapes going on in the early days, for sure. So, uh, what's your verdict then? Are you got a verdict on what you prefer? I'm sure. I mean, surely it's going to have a big impact on people's decision on buying an e-mountain bike, right? I'm liking the new high bikes with the piggyback system. I think you've got that option to ride lighter for those, you know, where there are days where you don't need that big range. Chris is big on his better. commute. And have you seen Chris's commuting <laughs> video? But we want to know what you guys, what, what do you think about batteries? Do you prefer the internal battery or do you prefer the external? Does weight come into it? Does cost come into it? Or... Is it purely a visual phenomena? Let us know in the comments down below. So Steve, where have you actually been the last couple of weeks? You haven't been in here. What's been going on? You've been out checking out some pretty cool stuff I hear. Well, the air conditioning has stopped working, I know, so I had to get, about it. get out and about. Uh, I've, been on a, I've been on a summer to sea feature mm -hmm. in northern Italy, uh, in a, just above Molini di Triora. Uh, pretty massive. I was with- 11 uh, hours, right? It was insane. So I was with the uh, former world downhill champion, uh, Fabian Borrell. Yeah. And also a character, a free ride skier called Nico Antonio, mm -hmm. who is absolutely insane. Yeah. I mean, what we were doing is pretty much off piste, but, uh, you know, we started off at 7,000 feet. Don't ask me how I got to 7,000 feet. Uh, but we had no idea how far it was and how much climbing and descending there would be to the coast. Right. But yeah, it really was a big, big day. It didn't come without its problems, I can tell you. Yeah, it sounded like it. But you didn't come straight home from that. You went to a certain Frenchman, the fastest Frenchman, on Two Wheels House. Yeah, well, 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 like I said, when we were talking about the, the new uh, GLP Lapierre project, I went to Nico Vulliers' house to have a look at his prototype uh, Lapierre Overvolt. Uh, really interesting. Bike comes in that uh, with his bike had big downhill case and tires mm -hmm. came in at around about twenty one kilos. But right. if you put lighter tires on there, that bike weighs in you know sub probably sub twenty. Well, nice. But yeah, uh, full carbon frame, including including the link and the front triangle and the mm -hmm. swinging arm. And he'd hand painted it himself. Really hilarious. <laughs> Coming up on the MBN in the next few weeks. Chris, I've got to say, uh, turning to mountain biking, mm -hmm. uh, Laurie Greenland won his first ever World Cup downhill at Val de Sol on the weekend. That was amazing, wasn't Absolutely it? Absolutely so good to see. Yeah. Another really cool event going on there was the Electric Snake event. Mm -hmm. sounded really good. Hosted by Shimano, had big names there, Fontana, Absalon, and Absalon was actually winning the race by quite a big, good margin. Mm -hmm. And his chain snapped, obviously oh, let Fontana okay. win. Yeah. Then he came in, charged all the way, took the win. So really exciting race, it looked really epic. Yeah. If you're wondering what that noise is in the background, that's seagulls uh, coming in for some lunch. Now, the big news is that next week, me and Chris are heading over to Italy, Switzerland, France to do the Tour du Mont Blanc, which is an invite only race around the famous summit. Uh, it's three days, like I said, which is Verbier to Comayeur, Comayeur to Chamonix, and then Chamonix back to Verbier. Now, obviously, you're going to have to be pretty lightweight. You're going to have to have spare batteries and also... Chargers, have... Steve. Don't forget chargers. chargers. Yeah, Talking yeah. of chargers, Shimano have actually launched a new E6000 charger, which is really cool for putting your backpacks a lot, obviously, mm -hmm. more compact. But the thing is with this, it doesn't pack quite the punch. But, it, pack, but it packs. Definitely That's does. the point. It packs. If you're going to go for any overnight trip, mm -hmm. that... I mean, this is a Shimano one, but Specialized do one as well, right? Yeah, Specialized do a stinky little one as well. Yeah. The thing is with these smaller chargers, they take a little bit more longer to actually charge to full. Now this takes seven and a half hours to charge from flat to full on the Shimano 504 watt hour batteries versus the Shimano Steps original charger, which takes five hours. So you're losing two and a half hours of charge time. So you better get in the bar earlier than anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it depends on what you're doing with your ride. If you you know, just want to stick it in to top up a little bit, then that's going to be ideal. But mm -hmm. if you're looking to kind of fast charge your battery, then that isn't going to be the tool for the job. It's great, isn't it? I mean, that's so compact. We can just, uh, you know, if we're taking even taking two batteries, exactly. you could you could take two chargers. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you've got the time to charge, it can be yeah. 
Great. Fits in the palm of So, yes, yeah, so next week is going to be a big week for me and Chris. 115k a day, is it? Uh, it's 360k total, with about 300 of that is going to be single track. Just looking forward to it's it. It's going to be a big, big week. Chris, it's gonna be, like I said, it's going to be a big week next mm -hmm. week. I hope you've been training for it. I mean, uh, really. Jim, be riding into yeah. work now and again. But We've got a lot of climbing to do next sounds week. Sounds like it. Probably a lot of walking as well. There's right? going to be some tricky sections, right. guaranteed. I did practice on the Isle of Arran, a lot of walking and bike walking <laughs> around. But um, yeah, this is really cool. Climb of the week coming in from Squirrel Squeezer as well. And this Christine. is Christine. Her husband, yeah. This is pretty gold, actually. This is a walk button. So you've got it on the back wheel, pressing the walk mode. And it's actually pulling you up the road, uh, up the trail on one wheel. It's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Good way of getting in between the rocks and yeah. not having two wheels and the weight of the bike is smudged. So. I think you've saved Chris there because Chris yeah. is going to be doing a lot of this next week, I foresee. <laughs> now in the comments this week, we did a video last week on Eco versus Boost or Eco versus Turbo. A uh, really good a remark in by Pat, who yeah. says, uh, my e-bike battery gauge is not linear, so 10% battery remaining is more like 10 minutes and then tugboat time. I suspect, I suspect that most bikes have this potential problem. I've been e-bike biking now for over two years, so my observation is not shallow. Absolutely mm -hmm. great comment there, because some bikes, definitely when you get down to, uh, you know, maybe two bars last at the bottom, bit, yeah. the last bit mm -hmm. does fall off yeah, quite yeah. dramatically. Especially right? if you stick a big climb in there as well, so you exactly. can see it lost. It kind of has a bit of memory. It remembers the draw from the last load from, yeah. from the battery. And so. obviously there's the heat, that, that, mm. you know, if, if the if the motor's, you know, quite hot yeah. or whether you're quite a heavy rider, mm. you're dead right. Things do can taper off quite dramatically. Yeah, whereas Viper Guy Dodge, he's saying, uh, I find that eco mode is the best mode to stay in 75% of the time. You definitely still have an advantage over an ordinary bike and still have the option to boost it up for the hard uphills. Mm. Even in eco, it's like having 100 watts of assistance, like half of an average ride helping you on a tandem. Yeah, I e think I think we all ride e-bikes differently, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah definitely. I think, I think we all tune into mm. the different... But I'm with that, I kind of try, like, try and stay in eco and mm. then stick it in when I, you know, trail in boost mode. Yeah. Uh, Chris, I've got to say this from Mark Collingwood. Mark, thanks for your comments over the last two years. Uh, I'm really, really happy that you've sent this uh, comment in this message. It's great news, right, Chris? Yeah, he's uh, I've been a fan of the channel right from the start, despite only taking delivery of my first e-bike yesterday. He's brought a specialised turbo Levo. Yes. Looking forward to getting out and seeing what I can do. Mark, we're looking forward to seeing your photographs on your Levo on the trail. Definitely. Well, sadly, the air conditioning isn't working here on the EMBN set today. Uh, so as you can see, uh, we're in t-shirts. Actually, we're always in t-shirts, mm -hmm. but we're not always in a nicely iron t-shirt and no, a crinkle cut t-shirt. <laughs> uh, these aren't, you can't actually buy these. You can't not actually buy them like this. They actually come nice and smooth like uh, this one I'm modeling here. Not quite so but check out the shop to get your EMBN t-shirt. Alrighty, it's time to get the big blue marble out. Time for where in the world, and we've had some cool stuff in this week, Steve. This is in from Chris. He's out in the Lake District on a specialised Kinevo. Mm. You've actually got a uh, method. Did you know that the Jones method? <laughs> this is for climbing hills. Sat down with a seat slammed. It's the. It is the method. It's not the Jones. The method. Jones method. But, he's uh, we can't need to say so. Came to, uh, he's taken. Oh, look at that! Inspiration from the Adam Brayton Lakes video that he did. Whoa, so. nice one. Look, look at that. that, look at that. Super cool trail. Where is that, Chris? Helevin? Helvelin. Helvelin, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> You've been there, right? <laughs> Let's move on. It looks great, looks amazing. Wow. Look wow. At, oh, moving on to that. Now, I know that is the Dolomite, South do. Tyrol. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. this is in from Matthias as well. Yeah. Wow, Rocky that, Mountain. that is e-bike territory, isn't it? Yeah, he's out on this Rocky Mountain altitude power play. Look at this. Whoa. Whoa. That's, that's cool, isn't it? That's cool, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Nice. We yeah, love Hel seeing after Helvelin. You, Helvelin. Helvelin. Yeah. And the Dolomites. But we love seeing all your uh, pictures here on EMBN. Be sure to use the upload service to get you featured in Where in the World or the Bike Vault. Okay, coming up on the channel this week on Friday, we've got a bit of tyre kicking going on with how to buy a second-hand e-mountain bike. And on Sunday, we've got a really cool video coming up. We're looking deep into our crystal ball and predicting the future of e-mountain biking. Have we got a crystal ball? Yeah, yeah.
Okay, diving straight in with the bike vault, and this is from Croatia. Had a beautiful bit of uh, pool action. Yeah, it's from Darren, and he's got his new giant. He's checking it out. Uh, very nice indeed. Very nice thinking? indeed. Uh, I think that is a super nice. If you don't mind me saying, Chris. super nice. Love it. Love it. Whoa, Ooh. Brace of Levos. It's not it's a brace. It's not three isn't a brace. Oh, what's a brace? Three, isn't it? Oh, okay. <laughs> this is him from Pavel. Patrick. Thank you, Brandon. He's out in Slovakia as well. Getting mm -hmm. used to the new Levos, loving it. Look at these. Do you reckon? That's nice. I'd like to see. I'd like to see it the other side way. Side on. Yeah, side on with the view and more in the background. He kind of got that big view. That's from Pavel. Did you say Patrick? Oh, Pavel. No. Yeah. So he said Patrick. No. It's a nice. Stuff. It's a nice. Ooh. Nice. Dusky. Look at this. This is him from Peter on his Cube Stereo Hybrid. He's out in. Uh, Wales, how do you pronounce it, Steve? Uh, Lavano? Clanwano Forestry. Clanwano. Clanwano. I don't know Clanwano is. It's, it's a lovely shot. It's I'd like to see a bit more light on the bike. It's a diff difficult shot to do that. Really difficult shot nice. to do. It's nice. Nice, look at Ooh. this. This is in some Sven with his 2019 Canyon Spectral. You just got one of those. Sweden, ones, you? yeah, I've got a red one now. Yeah, no. you, you went for the black one, didn't you? I did, all black Canyon. Yeah, yeah Spectral 9.0. This is in Hemavan, Sweden. Super Exploring nice. in the heat. Super nice. Super nice. Super nice. Super nice. Ooh, that's where's that? Where's uh, that? This is Copan. Right. What do you where's call that? it? Copan. Copan. Yeah. Where is Copan? I guess mm. in like Norway or something. It looks kind of like that. Yes. Anyway, John Aralid, uh, high bike extra at all mountain eight point zero. Yeah. It's got to be super nice, right? Look at this. This is from Sasha with a YT decoy pro race. Obviously with Kinevo in there as well. What is going on there? It's in Bottrop in Germany. Mm -hmm. Location is Heidi Haniel. It's a good name, isn't it? Heidi Haniel. I know Heidi. Yeah, I can see you being called Heidi. So what do you think? Kind of... You don't like it? All right, it's a nice. nice. It's a nice. Didn't like the backdrop. Yeah, I think that I think that focus has got the sign behind it. That's... Mm -hmm. That could have been really nice. So for Chris as well, his Focus Sam 2 6.8. Chris is in Rotorua. Mm -hmm. uh, get the sign out of the shot. Get yeah. the sign out of it. Nice. Wow, Ooh. cool. So this is from Mike, the Specialized Turbo Levo. He's out in Ticino in How Switzerland. How long your Bambino now? Three. Three months? One at three months and one at three. Right. So, <laughs> you need a trolley, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I do, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what are you thinking? Yeah. Nice? I think it's super nice. I think it's great. I'm going to need to turn the trolley around. Super nice. <laughs> That'll be me and you next week. <laughs> <laughs> this one in from Michael with his Ghost SL. Sorry, AMR. super nice. Sorry, I forgot super nice. And ca a Ghost Cato as well. Mm -hmm. Central Bohemia, Czech Republic. Whoa. I really like that. I do. Do you mind? Go for it. Super nice. Uh, Lastly, we've got this one in from Daniel with his Giant Trance E+. Plus. He's out in... Germany? No, he's not. He's in that location there. And Germany, Königslutter. Königslutter Animal. Mm. Okay. You been nice. there? I haven't. He's, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. nice. Oh, it actually isn't the last one. We always go for that. This is a Magero. It's Lapier Overvolt XC500. I think today's bike file is going to keep going with looks. Italy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think to this one then, Steve? Uh, yeah. Yeah, up to you. Up to I'm going to go with nice on that one. Okay. Cool. But that is definitely it's the end not, of the It's not, there's more. Oh, there is more. There is more. Oh, wow. What a good one. It definitely is the last one. This is a banger to end on as well. Crikey, Chris has been going for it this week. This is in from Darren with his Ducati MIG RR. Ripon, North Yorkshire. That's a that beautiful bike. That is a nice bike, bike isn't it? That is nice. That's That's too many of those. Nice, isn't it? It's got to be a nice. super nice. Yeah. Super nice Ducati to finish. But don't forget, keep sending your bikes into the bike vault. Details are on screen. How to get it featured, and it could be you. It blows my mind if, where people take their e-bikes. Cool, amazing, absolutely amazing. And that's it. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts and comments on internal or semi-integrated batteries, whether weight or price comes into your decision making. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, check out a video which Chris has done on battery care. And also have a look at Chris driving his white Mercedes AMG 3 litre to work. I don't know what plate it was on. 12 plates. It's not 12 plates. It's not as nice as your Porsche. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's show, <laughs> give us a thumbs up, drop some comments in the box below, and we'll see you next week.